It's finally here, Trail Running Shoe Matrix Vlog Early 2020. I had no idea, everyone, that the response to the Road Running Shoe Matrix Vlog from just three weeks ago was gonna be so big. Upper right hand corner, it was just an idea that came to me in late May and I was like, you know what? What if I attempted to synthesize all of these running shoe reviews, first impression uh, vlogs into one vlog. So that was three weeks ago, upper right hand corner, road running shoes, I should mention neutral road running shoes. And now we're going into trail running shoes. And yes, my process for selecting, and remember what I said three weeks ago, uh, running shoe stores, they can be a little overwhelming when you walk in. The wall of running shoes, it's like, whoa, where do I even begin? So my process, very simple, is do I need a road or trail shoe? All right, step one. A neutral or stability shoe, step two. And step three, uh, what is the shoe going to accomplish within the running shoe rotation or the task that you have within your training plan? Okay, so that's my three-step process. But now my goal is to make four uh, running shoe matrix vlogs per year. Okay, basically every six months, two, so a road, a road running shoe vlog, a matrix vlog, a trail running shoe matrix vlog, and then six months later, another one because there's so many running shoes coming onto the marketplace every six months. But, 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 I've decided that at 100, 000, I'm just gonna say it, at 100,000 subscribers, I have a new goal with respect to stability running shoes. I haven't forgotten about you out there. Everyone that needs to run in stability running shoes, whether it's road or trail, okay? So, but I'm not ready yet. I'll announce it at, yes, I'm gonna say it. Like we are knocking on 90,000. Thank you, by the way, for being here, for sharing the vlog. And uh, we are onward and upward to, uh, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing what's happening here in the studio. You inspire me to keep doing this research and figuring it out. Okay, also I wanna say that most of our running shoe conversations happen down in the comments, but also on Twitter. So if you're on Twitter, and I'm not saying you need to join Twitter, but if you're on Twitter, make sure you find me because there's a lot of good conversations happening uh, there around running shoes. All right, here we go. All of the first impressions and or full review for all of these shoes I'm about to go through are listed down below in the description if you want to go into way more uh, in depth for each shoe because I just can't, we'd be here till midnight if I was doing each shoe uh, talking about how they performed on each individual uh, run out there. And one more point before we dive into the matrix, you've probably already thought about this, road matrix versus trail matrix. There's so many different types of trails out there on this earth, whether it's rocky trails, sandy trails, high alpine scree fields, uh, buffed out trails, you know, in a city park. I mean, it's just, uh, it's just very, very, there's a lot more uh, diversification in trail running. So keep that in mind. And, and I'll try and make note as we're going through the different uh, categories and the shoes that are assigned to each category um, as to my rationale for each decision. Oh yeah, also, I cannot run in every single trail shoe, maybe in the future, but right now it's just not possible to acquire them. For example, I don't, I, I didn't run in any New Balance or Saucony uh, early trail shoes for 2020 thus far. Those are just a couple companies that come to mind. Down the road, I hope to run in more shoes in order to test them out for all, or also like the Adidas lineup. Um, a couple people were asking me uh, on Twitter yesterday about Adidas and I just haven't had a chance to work them into the rotation for trail shoes. Sound good? Okay, here we go. The top of the matrix, ready for this? Um, and there's th these categories have changed a little bit from the road running just because of course, different types of trails uh, trying to accomplish different tasks out there on the trails. All right, here we go. Top of the matrix easy slash commuter shoes. I'll come back to that in a minute. Tempo slash fartlek. All right, that's the next uh, column there. FKTs slash racing, or, or race, I should say racing slash FKTs. All right, that's the, uh, what is that, third column. And the fourth column, middle distance slash long run. Okay, so here we go. Commuter shoes, you run two miles on the pavement, you end up on the trails for four miles, and then two miles back on pavement. So it's that crossover shoe for the easy slash commuter shoe. I'm putting it into the same column because uh, basically easy days, I'm not looking to go climb mountains, I'm not looking to go over big rocks, 
Um, and for commuters, uh, usually you're not going from a, a city environment to really aggressive trail running, unless you live in some very unique places, but oftentimes you're commuting to trails that are a little more tame, a little more buffed out, okay? So easy slash commuter, tempo slash Bartlick. Um, so this is, in on trails, I'm never going out to trails to let's say like do a threshold run. That was a column that was in the road, um, on the road option, but I don't go do thresholds. I save thresholds for the pavement and or uh, basically a dirt road, which is really, really uh, beaten down. And I use road shoes actually for thresholds on dirt roads, if that makes sense, all right? So that's tempo slash fart lick. And yes, I do do fart lick workouts up on the trails every now and then, not too often. In a fart lick where you can go, you know, two minutes on, one minute off, or four minutes on, two minutes off, um, kind of like an interval, a baby interval session out there on the trails. But I never go to the trails to do intervals, which you probably notice um, I didn't have an interval column for this trail running shoe matrix because once again, I save the intervals, the more intense, high intensity uh, for a track session, uh, once again, like a really buffed out dirt road um, or even or even um, even on like a grass soccer field in like spikes like track spikes So and next in the column racing slash FKTs that's self-explanatory That is the third column and then lastly middle distance slash long run So those long trail runs, you know getting ready for you know ultra running perhaps or if you want to go out So for me, it's like that 15 to 22 or 23 mile long run But I will say there's a lot of people out there that go out for 25 30 30 mile, even 35 mile long runs who are preparing for 50 mile, 100 mile races. Um, so I'm keeping that in mind as well for the fourth column. Okay, the Y axis, here we go on the trail running shoe major. So we got soft, firm, responsive, foot protection. Okay, that's a new one because rocky trails, all right, that's a new one, foot protection. And then traction, that's also a new one because trails versus roads, we need traction out there on the trails. And now as we dive into the matrix, there will be some spots on the matrix that are left blank or empty because I just don't think you need that type of shoe for that particular task within your training. I'll explain as we get there. All right, here we go. So for the easy slash commuter shoe with a soft landing, we're looking at the, oh, I, sh I almost forgot, the Nike Pegasus 36 trail. Sometimes I will pull over shoes from 2019 into 2020 because I think that this shoe actually is better than all of the early 2020 uh, trail shoe options thus far early in 2020. So for example, easy slash commuter, soft landing uh, to 28, 18 on the stack height, 28 in the heel, 18 on the, on the forefoot, $90 right now. And that shoe uh, I think is actually better than any other shoe out there on the marketplace for an easy day shoe slash commuter shoe with a soft landing. So it is a, it is a carryover from 2019. Okay, moving on to a firmer ride for an easy slash commuter, uh, commuter shoe, the Solomon Sense Ride 3, no doubt. Definitely, actually, where is it? it here it is. For the durometer test, it's just, it's firm. Solomon is known to be a little more of a firm landing, uh, but it's, the lug depth is not crazy. It's decent though, but it's not crazy. They're low enough that you could, you could go on pavement, absolutely. Um, and it's, you know, and for an easy day, it's a little on the heavy side, but not bad for an easy slash commuter shoe. We're looking at 25 in the heel, 17 in the forefoot for $120. Now, next is easy slash commuter, responsive, not applicable. We're leaving it blank. I'm not looking for responsiveness for an easy day shoe. I'm looking just to bop along. All right, just bop along. So we're leaving that one blank. And lastly, in the easy slash commuter column, we're looking at the Nike. Pegasus Trail 2. Okay, 31 and 21. And definitely, this is the, oh yeah, this is the foot protection. Okay, plenty of stack height in this shoe. Lug depth is not crazy. Uh, this is absolutely an easy day slash commuter with plenty of foot protection. Now, this is kind of that crossover, what I was mentioning earlier, where it might, um, you know, if you end up on trails uh, when you're commuting to trails from pavement where you actually do end up needing just a little bit of protection from the rocks and the roots. I'm not, th you know, I'm thinking of like some trails in Boulder, Colorado would uh, be a good option for the Nike Pegasus Trail too. And we're looking at $130 
from Nike right there, right there. And lastly is traction for easy slash commuter shoe. Once again, leaving it blank because I'm just not like, and when I think of traction, I'm not looking for aggressive trails for an easy day or commuting to the trails. Um, you know, for example, the Innovate X Talon G235, I would never wear this on an easy day. Those lugs are eight millimeters. So anyway, just want to mention that for the easy slash commuter column, no traction option there. And moving on to the next column over in the matrix, Tempo slash Fartlek shoe for the trails. First row is blank, soft. I'm not looking for a soft shoe when I wanna go faster. I want a little more responsiveness, a little firmer, okay? So the next one down is in fact firm. We're looking at the VJ Max, the VJ Max. There it is, definitely a firmer ride. We're looking at 16 in the heel, 10 in the forefoot, coming in at $160, running a little narrow. I will say that much, running narrow, VJ Max, um, a company out of Finland, I do believe. I believe out of Finland. So VJ Max, I think they, I, I almost put this in the responsive category because it does have some good snap to it, but it is a little bit of a firmer ride for a tempo day or a fartlek day on the trails. Moving on next to yes, responsive. We're going with the Nike Terra Kiger 6. We're looking at 27 in the heel, 23 in the forefoot, coming in at $98 right now. Definitely responsive on um, you're kind of, I don't know, I feel like you're one with the trail in this shoe, like it's a lower stack height, especially through that forefoot, which I think gives you that nice push off for good response through your foot strike. All right, Nike Terra Kiger 6 for the Tempo slash Fartlek, looking at uh, the responsive ride. Now, foot protection, here we go. Tempo, where is it, where is it? Yes, the Hoka Torrent 2, brand new to the running shoe rotation, 26 in the heel, 21 in the forefoot, coming in at $120. This shoe, I think, is making, it's already making waves out there. And because of that 26 and 21 stack height, it does have enough midsole cushion to protect your feet from the rocks and the roots out there. Okay, Hoka Torin 2, absolutely awesome. Okay, last but not least in this column, where is it, where is it? There it is, the Hoka EVO Jaws, coming in at 23 and 20 for the Tempo slash Fartlek. This is the traction row, traction row. Look at that lug depth. I am, yes, loving this shoe thus far in 2020. And oh, I should mention, this is actually a carryover from 2019. And somebody asked me, are they gonna be updating this shoe in 2020? I don't know yet. Actually, if somebody out there from Hoka is watching, let us know uh, down in the comments, is this shoe gonna be updated? Because I think a lot of people are enjoying for, and I'll come back to this shoe also in the racing column in just a second, but the Hoka EVO Jaws for good traction for tempo slash fartlek work out on the trails, all right? Great traction actually for the Hoka EVO Jaws. Moving on to the next column, we got the racing slash FKTs column. Keeping in mind, oh man, huge, huge point here. Out on the trails, you can do a vertical kilometer race, which is a very short, steep race up a mountain, or you can do a half marathon on a buffed out trail, or you could do a hundred mile race um, over, in the, over in the Alps, over in the French, Italian, Swiss Alps. So just a big asterisk that when I talk about racing, it, you know, a little bit of it comes down to the distance that you are actually racing, but I'll try and synthesize this information as best as possible. Okay, here we go. For a softer landing, for a racing slash FKT work, um, and I'm just gonna say also for longer distances, it's gotta be the Hoka EVO Speed Goat. Uh, where is it? I don't know where, there it is. The Hoka EVO Speed Goat, which yes, is a carryover from 2019. There it is, Hoka EVO Speed Goat. We're looking at 31 and 27, plenty of stack height through this shoe, $160. $160 for the Hoka EVO Speed Goat. Next for a firmer landing for racing, bet you didn't see this coming, the Skechers Speed TRL. Skechers Speed TRL. And I'll, I'll also just add lots of good, if you like ground contact feel, this is the shoe for you, especially through the forefoot. So we're looking at 26 and 22 for the stack height, coming in at a good $115. Um, so Skechers Speed TRL, I really enjoyed uh, testing out this shoe, but I never got to race in it because all the races were canceled this past spring, but um, definitely a, a firmer ride for the trails. I, I'm just gonna say like, 
man, a 5K, you know, 5K up to half marathon for this shoe for racing. Okay, moving on next to the responsive category. We're looking at the Solomon. There it is, the Solomon S-Lab Sense 8 SG. There it is, Solomon S-Lab S S8 SG, 22 in the heel, 18 in the forefoot, $180, snappy, just nice and snappy. I love this shoe. I'm still undecided as to what shoe I prefer more, EVO Jaws or Solomon S Lab Sense 8 SG, but I'm, I put this guy more in the responsive category, mostly because of this pro feel uh, film that they added here through the outsole, right here through the midfoot. It just adds a nice snap to it. Um, so absolutely the most responsive. Um, and I'm gonna say, could you, uh, yeah, <laughs> could you race a marathon on the trails in the shoe? Absolutely. Could you race a 50K? Absolutely. Would it be my first option? depending on the vertical gain. Um, if it was less vertical gain, I would say that this would not be my first choice. If it was more vertical gain where I wanted to dig more into the mountain, I would say this would be my first choice. All right, Solomon S Lab Sense 8 S. G. Moving on to the next row, foot protection. Oh yeah, here we go. Again, I had to carry over from 2019, the Solomon S Lab uh, Ultra 2. Now this is the Ultra 1, but the Ultra 2 is very, very similar to the Ultra 1. Definitely for foot protection, this would be my go-to shoe for racing and or FKT work. Solomon S Lab Ultra 2, 26 in the heel, 18 in the, in the forefoot, $135. And the reason I went with this guy is because once again, Solomon is known for a little bit of a firmer landing, um, a little bit of a firmer midsole. You can see it there. It's just not quite as giving through that midsole, which yes, lends itself to a better protection from the rocks and the you know rocks poking through, especially through the forefoot. You really don't want that when you're out there racing and going fast. Um, so there you go, Solomon S Lab Ultra 2. We'll put that back on the shelf. And last but not least for racing slash FKTs, and we're looking at uh, grip or traction for this last row in the column. Uh, where is it? There we go. Yes, the Innovit. Oh, and I forgot to I forgot to weigh this the other day. Oh, here we go. This is exciting. So there's two shoes in this row, I couldn't resist. So I'm going back to the Hoka Evo Jaws for this column, racing slash FKTs and good traction, great traction, okay? Hoka Evo Jaws and it weighs 6.4 ounces and I, I predicted that this guy would be under seven ounces. Now that I'm feeling it, I don't know if it's going to be, but I'm gonna put it on here, 6.7. Oh yes, I we got it, we got it. So this actually weighs very similar to the S Labs, oh, identical, okay. So these three shoes are all in the like 0.3 ounces off from each other. That is very exciting, Innovate. So I'm also putting Innovate, um, and I'm just gonna say right now that I've already lost some lugs. I've ripped them off of the bottom. I think it was the Longs Peak FKT from last weekend. I've lost like a couple of lugs off the, so as far as durability, not the greatest in the Hoka EVO Jaws. Whereas I can guarantee you, lugs are are really not gonna come off the bottom of this Innovate X Talon G235. I think I'm going to, I might have to lace this up for an FKT really, really soon. Now, incredible traction. I'm, very, I'm actually very excited to really let this guy, that 6.7 ounces gets me very, very excited. Good work, Innovate. Great traction uh, for the racing slash FKT column out of, uh, out of the Lake District over in the UK. I just love it. So good work there. Okay, moving on to the last column. Here we go. Middle distance slash long run. So that 15 to 22 miles out on the trails. And yes, you know, um, I'm not training like this right now because I'm not training for 50 miles and 100 miles, but um, also upwards of those, you know, 30 mile long runs out there on the trails when you're getting ready for ultra races. Of course, I gotta go to 2019, barely, barely, the Hoka Speed Go 4. There it is, 32 in the heel, 28 in the forefoot, $145 for the soft, uh, the soft row, soft row in the trail running shoe matrix. Hoka Speed Go 4, a little heavy, all right? so. By the end of a long run, your legs might be a little tired, but it's still a great option for a nice soft landing for a long 
run. Moving on to the firm category. Where is it? I had it out here. There it is, the Merrill MTL Long Sky. Absolutely a little more on the firm side for a long run. Let's just do the, yeah, it's firm, but it's actually surprise. It, I enjoyed the ride in the shoe. Um, I don't, I would not use this shoe for like a long buffed out trail type of run. This would be a little more like undulating hills. If it has some pretty solid traction on the bottom. So if it's muddy out or rainy out, this would be another good option, but it is a little on the firm side, Merrill MTL long sky, uh, but definitely could go the distance for 15, 20, even longer type of long run training shoe. There you go, Merrill MTL Long Sky, 26 in the heel, 18 in the forefoot, $130. And next up in the matrix, here we go, the Ultra Superior 4.5 uh, being released officially. You can pre-order now, but being released officially in July. Oh man, so as far as this is falling into the responsive row, uh, we're looking at 19 in the heel, 19 in the forefoot, so a zero drop shoe. You know that about Ultra coming in at $110. And I just gotta say, um, a lower stack height, I think creates more responsiveness, again, once again, through that foot strike where you're in control of the shoe and the shoe is not in control of you, okay? I felt very responsive out there. Uh, just testing it out, I think two days ago or three days ago, out on the trails. So responsive shoe, but just keep in mind, it is zero drop. If you don't like zero drop, you know, don't buy this shoe. So there you go, responsive category. Moving on next, long run shoe, a doubling up today. That's a good sign for the Solomon Sense Ride 3. We've already talked about this shoe, 25, 17, $120. This is the foot protection row foot protection, once again, just a stout midsole, very stout. Um, and because of that durometer test, just like a little bit of a firmer ride, you are gonna get great, I'm not gonna say good, you get great foot protection um, if you're out there on rocky trails, okay? So there you go, Solomon Sense Ride 3, $120. And last but not least, in the trail running shoe matrix early 2020, we're going with the Nike Wild Horse 6 for traction for a long run. Traction for a long run. Wild Horse 5 versus Wild Horse 6. They made a ton of updates to the Wild Horse 6. So here you go. This is, it just has just enough lug depth to get you good traction, but still also enough stack height uh, to protect the legs, keep them happy over those longer distances out there on the trail, okay? So there you go, Nike Wild Horse 6, long run category, traction. Oh my goodness, I think we did it. That was a lot of trail running shoes. Listen, and once again, I cannot run in every single trail shoe out there on the marketplace. Maybe someday I actually have a game plan to accomplish that down the road. We'll talk about that at some point. And question of the day, here we go. What was the last trail shoe that you purchased and why. And the camera just stopped recording. I'm not sure where it stopped. I do apologize. I, what I was saying in the just a second ago was, um, and hopefully I'm not repeating myself too much, is that uh, the trail running, when you go to a running shoe store, just having the information at hand um, as far as what you're looking for, I think can be really, really beneficial because those running shoe walls, once again, are just a little bit overwhelming at times. All right, we're gonna toss it back everyone to the Road Running Shoe Matrix vlog from three weeks ago. If you haven't seen that one yet, Road Running Shoe Matrix vlog early 2020. Neutral, neutral I should say. Stability, we'll get to you at some point. We'll get to you at some point. All right everyone, onward and upward, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.